to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome the Gems 5am club. It's uh, Tuesday and uh, I'm still up here at Nelson Bay at Little Beach and I'm just getting ready to uh, head back to Sydney. It's been a nice couple of days. It's been sunny, a little bit windy, a little bit of a chill in the air been great to get away from Sydney and uh, be out and about. Don't know what I've done here with the phone but I've uh, pressed the button and we've got all these little uh, heart shapes coming up on the screen. So uh, don't know how to fix that. Maybe have a look. children, with my wife Paula, with my late parents, my father, of course, and uh, a lot of friends who have uh, joined us over the years. So um, what I want to do today is I want to have a chat to you about a book summary. So we'll go on a bit of a walk and talk. So uh, have a chat about a book summary today, which is entitled The Case Against Education. It's a controversial topic, but uh, one of the uh, one of the beauties of Jim's 5am club is that uh, I am an emissary. I am but a messenger, and what I find is one of the advantages of being a messenger is that you get to uh, uh, read book summaries and you know, portray, pass on other people's views, other people's experiences, and along the way, hopefully, we can pick up a couple of life hacks and use it to our benefit. So pardon me if uh, some of this is controversial, and uh, I, I'd imagine that there are a lot of people who may not agree with the content of this book and of this message, but uh, one of the important things I think for all of us is to at least think about these things uh, because nothing in the world is perfect, no system that we indulge in um, is great, especially things like education. We have a lot of institutions that are outdated and uh, because the world is changing very very quickly world is changing quickly and it's changing dramatically. So uh, this book summary today talks about the case against the education system as it stands at the moment and uh, I guess maybe looks for ways of changing it. Uh, one thing for sure and for certain is that COVID-19 did hit the alarm bells for all of us and put everybody on notice in terms of uh, how the education system currently works and whether or not it is relevant and capable of taking us into the next century. So the author kicks off quite bluntly and says that the school system that we currently have in Australia and across the globe because I think most countries are very very similar the school system doesn't teach you much that is relevant to real life it's a bit of a shock that one but uh, he goes on to say that um, research identifies that while college does help with critical thinking skills, these critical thinking skills don't reach beyond the classroom. 
and a degree a degree these days doesn't make you smarter in the real world we have these debates all the time as parents with our children and with people around us who keep on saying that the stuff that they learn at school is not relevant and um, I guess to a certain point this author is saying that those thoughts are pretty well spot on but what we'll do is the author also then starts to look at other things um, because it's pretty it's really really hard it's really hard to develop a system a one system fits all um, so uh, and this is the challenge that we all face because all the communities in the world have children which they need to um, school in some way to prepare them for the real world so how do you do it in a way which I guess prepares the majority for the real world yeah, you look at kids like this morning I saw a, a school bus driving past and there were uh, kids waiting at the bus stop there and I remember my school days even though I love school I absolutely love school but there are days where you just went to school and it was just monotonous it was the same old uh, same old classrooms same old lessons and yes we made progress we learned algebra we learned um, geometry we learnt uh, fractions percentages we learned a lot of things but it seemed to take forever you know, it just seemed to take forever to learn things so this, this what we're saying here is that, that there's got to be a better way and I remember going to a seminar years ago where Jim Rowland said that uh, a school education a university education will get you a job it'll earn you an income but if you really want to stand out in the world and make a difference you need to indulge in self education you need to educate yourself and these days with the internet there are so many opportunities for people to learn so many things and yet when was the last time you spoke to somebody who actually read a book and talked to you about a book whilst I do this every day Jim's 5am club and we're almost up to a thousand or probably more than a thousand books that I've been able to uh, deliver by this platform the question I ask you and think about this seriously when was the last time you spoke to anyone who mentioned a book or mentioned reading something that they learnt and they found it valuable it's become very very rare I don't hear anybody talking about books anymore or things that they've learnt I'll hear about people's trips I'll see the food that people eat the parties that they go to the outfits that they wear but all of that doesn't lead to anything you don't learn anything from that sort of thing that is just showing off and expressing lifestyle which I guess it's interesting in some ways but it doesn't give you any depth it doesn't allow you to grow and develop and become anybody better than what you were before because it just becomes a competition in terms of you know, who can post the, uh, the nicest dish or um, who can post a photo of the, um, 
you know, the nicest, nicest, nicest party um, experience. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. But the author goes on, and the second point to come out of this, his book is where he says that graduating from college is important because it signals to employers that you're a hard worker, but it won't turn you into a dil diligent person. Um, to do well at school just means that you can follow instructions, you uh, get things done, you're able to learn it and to reproduce it. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're a, a smart person in terms of your critical thinking skills. But um, all of this hard, this hard work that we talk about and getting to college and graduating, the argument that this author um, suggests is that the people already have these traits. They're not developed at school. Um, you can see from a very, very young age how diligent, how um, committed kids are to getting things done. So what the author is saying is that a lot of people point to the school and say, well, the school was able to help my child become a better worker, a better team person, a better this and a better that. But the author here says that all of those skills, all of those traits, your child probably had already. So regardless of which school they went to, regardless of which educational institution they were, they were exposed to, they would have found their way anyway. So uh, the degree, the education, isn't, an evid isn't evidence of your child um, learning how to become a, a hard worker. They already were before that. But the thing is, when you don't have too many things to compare, all employers can do these days is to look for the traits. You know, they, they need to look for people who are diligent, obedient, and intelligent. But the school doesn't give those skills. But uh, as we said before, it's already proven that you already have those skills, but at least the school gives you an opportunity to benchmark your abilities against other people and to, uh, to provide employers at least with something that they can uh, compare you to. The author then goes on to talk about a few other things. And one of the things that they talk about is how do, we, how do you fix the education system? And once again, this is all pretty controversial as well. But uh, he says that we need to reform the way it's done and rethink the way we see work. School prepares people poorly for the real world. He says it again and again and again. Um, and there is a call, a call to action, to look at vocational training and job training rather than just classroom learning. So what the author is saying here is that what would be good would be to prepare people for real life by breaking down what life's all about and learning relationship skills, learning teaming skills, but learn, learning them in a practical in a practical way rather than a roundabout way that school tries to do it for everybody. And in order to do this, we need some vocational training as well in schools. Some kids aren't suited to the classroom. Some kids aren't suited to the education system as it stands at the moment, according to the author. So what we need to do, according to the author, is have more vocational training at school and on the job training where children are able to select from a very young age what they're really, really interested in and also what they're good at. 
and use that as a basis for uh, providing children with a range of uh, training skills that they can learn at school, that they can use once they leave school to prepare them for life. In order to do this, the author talks about adjusting the child labour laws so that kids can get more work experience earlier in their lives rather than going to school and being bored out of their minds, which a lot of children are. You, know, you don't have to, uh, to try and imagine it. You know, you know yourself when you're at school, there were kids who thrived in the school environment and there were kids who absolutely hated it. Couldn't wait to uh, get out of that school, couldn't wait to do something different, but school wasn't for them. So in some way we need to cater for those people as well, as opposed to uh, making their life a continual misery. Um, I guess the things that I've learned over my life um, as I say, I'm not an educator, but I have been a parent, and I am a parent, and uh, I'm a grandparent as well. I've also uh, been a karate instructor and um, mentored a number of people over the years as well. But uh, if I was starting out my life again, or if I was able to influence anybody in terms of life learning, the thing that I absolutely love, the thing that has actually changed my life and made my life much more interesting and gives me so much energy every day, is that years ago, I decided to learn something new every single day. I wasn't gonna allow a day to pass without me learning something new. That's, it. That's just me, but it's a decision. It's the actual decision that I committed to and that I made. I don't know how it came about, but I think I went to a seminar once, one of the seminars where one of the presenters said something that profoundly changed my life, where he said, that you can learn something new every single day. And in a year's time, you will have learnt 365 new things. And in 10 years, it will be 3,650 new things. But he said, not only is it important to learn something, but once you learn it, you're in a better position to learn more. Because what learning is, is the ability to attach the unknown to the known. So the more that you know, you're, the more you're capable of knowing. So uh, it grows exponentially. So by learning more things, by attaching more things to the unknown, what you're doing is that you're uh, drawing lines to more dots. You're creating more dots, but you're also linking more dots. So exponentially, your mind is expanding, you're learning so much more, and you're able to see the world with a different expanded perspective. If I was in a position of power to be able to influence people, the one thing that I would encourage people to do would be to do exactly what I'm doing right now, to become vloggers, to become vloggers where they take book summaries or books, they read the book summary and they present the book summary because learning is an active thing. I remember another presenter once saying that if you want to learn something and you want to learn it well, you need to learn it in order to present it. And by presenting something, by teaching something, 
is it's going to reinforce your learning even more stronger than just learning it by yourself. So for those who have been following me on Jim's 5am club, I've done over a thousand vlogs in English and I'm probably up to a thousand one hundred in total when I add the 61 that I've done in Greek. But we have the technology. We've got the iPhone, we've got a selfie stick, we've got the, uh, the video quality and the acoustic quality to enable children as young as 10 to be able to go on their uh, on a journey and just document, express, articulate what they're learning, what they learnt and why it's interesting or important to them. There's nothing stopping children doing what I'm doing and as I said you don't have to listen to my vlogs but what I encourage parents and children to do is to become film directors in their own lives the rubbish that you see on television the crap that you see at the movies you can do much better than that I remember as I said years ago going to a Steve Covey seminar when he said it's important it's very very important to read books and to have a massive library of books at home but what's even more important is for the library of books that you have to be books that you have written to be journals to be journals where you are able to articulate and express your thoughts, your fears, your vulnerabilities, your successes, your learnings, all of those things. We've got a lifetime. Each and every person has a lifetime. And each person, each and every person has a different past, has a different present, and we're all going to have different futures. We are all going to have different, absolutely different um, expressions of reality. We're all going to see a different slither of reality. So what we're learning here is that uh, everybody has something to offer. Everybody has something to pass on. So one of the, uh, one of the goals of Jim's 5am club is for us to live, learn and pass it on. And my question, my question to each and every one of you is what are you going to pass on other than an asset or two, um, a few experiences, a few photos, a photo album or two? What else are you going to pass on to your family and friends? What is your legacy going to be? How are you going to retire and pass those years in a way which is productive, interesting, and something that's going to give you fulfillment? One thing you may want to consider, and I really, really want you to think about this, is to commence your own vlog channel. Anybody wanting help, I, I'm happy to pass on my uh, experience. It may, it may help, it may not help. You may want to start your own vlogs and do your own thing your own way. There's no problem with doing that. But if I was a kid again, if I was 10 years old again, what I'd be doing is I'd be doing what I'm doing now every single day. I'd be coming home from school and I'd be doing a vlog on what I learnt at school that day because by doing vlogs it allows you to think on your feet it allows you to recall what you've read what you've done and it also cements it it uh, ingrains it in your brain and it's something you can pass on to your family it can be something that you can look back on 
No, as much as I hate to think about it, there will come a day if I age and I'm still healthy that I may be incapacitated. One of the things that I think about is that in a situation like that, I can always go back and look and listen to the vlogs that I put together during my heyday or during the day that I was able to be out and about, independent, without a care in the world. So uh, that's a selfish thing that I do for myself. But another important thing also is that a lot of us are going to suffer uh, uh, health issues and some may even have dementia and uh, those sorts of problems with our, with our memories. One of the great things about vlogging is that it keeps your brain active because you're thinking about what you're doing, you're in the present because you're um, vlogging about what is currently happening and that in itself can possibly, I won't say it will, but possibly can keep you healthier, mentally healthier for longer. So think about it. And if you do notice a deterioration, it will appear on your vlogs. You'll be able to see that you're starting to forget things. You'll see that you're able to uh, not uh, be able to um, maintain a thought pattern. But all of these things are going to be signs. So something to think about. Anyway, let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay committed, stay relevant. And most importantly, let's make the most of these sunny days that we have when we're still healthy and we're still strong. And um, be the wind beneath our wings. Work with each other. Share experiences, share knowledge, share life hacks that may help us, our families, or anybody else. Anyway, I'll leave it up to you. As I say, anybody who needs any help with vlogging in terms of the technology, the techniques, uh, where I get my book summaries from, um, how I do it, why I do it, drop me a line, give me a call, and I'm happy to partner with you. Uh, one thing I would absolutely love would be to see lots of 5am clubs by lots of different people over the years so that we can create our own entertainment rather than relying on other people's. Because as I said, the amount of garbage that you see out there on television, at the movies and surrounding us, it is uh, it's poor form because you don't learn anything from it. One of the goals that we should all have is to try and expand our knowledge, become better, and to pass on our knowledge and our wisdom and our learnings to the next generation and the generation after that. Remembering that when you vlog, when you upload it to YouTube or to Facebook, it'll be there for many, many years. So uh, it will not be lost, unlike the old days when my grandparents would, would make videos and uh, it's lost in time because it's on a video eight, it's in a VCR or something like that, which is deteriorated and lost forever. Whereas now we have a technology which can transcend generations, can transcend time and become immortal to a certain extent. So wouldn't it be great in a hundred years or so for our future generations to look back and to see how life was back in the early 2000s. Anyway, take care, if you like ya, and we'll chat again. Bye for now from Jim's 5am Club. Bye.